Try to stop me now Welcome back to Gunday Morning Quarterback. Today we're going to talk about how the Uniparty is nearing its goal of its magical utopia and why the things that are happening today are happening. And as a spoiler alert, it's not a good feel-good video, but it is a realist video as we go through some of these subjects. So, moving on. First, we gotta figure out why these things are exactly are happening. And then we'll talk about the things themselves. So, if you look at this through a scope of why the government is doing the thing it's doing, their hand is doing the thing that it's doing, such as media, if you look at it through that glass, it becomes pretty clear that the whole reason they're doing it is to bring the last vestige of freedom, the most powerful citizenry on the globe to heal and to just keep them in a survival mode. When they do that, when they keep people in a survival mode, there's no opportunity to better oneself, to prepare oneself. All you're doing is trying to just live, just survive and hopefully one day thrive. And that is where all the emphasis is placed on is that you thrive. Um, unfortunately, that's just how it is. The poor are too busy struggling and the wealthy don't want to cause any ripples because they have a good gig going on right now and so they don't want to mess that up. And so the middle class are the actual men typically of action and there are exceptions to that such as Robert Morris during the Revolutionary War who actually funded the Continental Army because Congress would not do so and they were dragging their feet. So Robert Morris is the one who actually paid them. So there are exceptions to the rule, but for the most part, the wealthy and ultra wealthy are gonna be off doing their thing and not wanting to cause any kind of a disturbance and the poor are gonna be too distracted trying to survive. So, and so we're left with the middle class, which is really the class that exists and its mere existence is a deterrent for a tyrannical government to go out of control because they're the men of action typically. So once we look at it through that light, it's kind of clear why all these things are happening. We talked about the Continental Army and how it was funded privately, um, at least for a time. Joining an army for a nation begins to look really good when your family is starving and suffering. And so it's kind of clear one motivating factor of being pushed into this either ultra poor, ultra rich side is that the military option is almost always there for people to fall back on. And when times get bad enough, that's what they do. Look at Germany about a hundred years ago, a little less, but close to a hundred years ago, uh, it was really bad financially over there. Their economy tanked, things were bad. And so they finally had the notion of, if I you know, join the army, my family is gonna at least have some regular pay and income coming in, so they'll be taken care of. I'll get you know regular meals on my own that do not deduct from that income that's coming in for my work, and I'll get the extra metrosexual German uniform. So many benefits that they could have seen to that. The question is, have you felt a squeeze on these last few years especially? And of course, before that we had the shutdowns, which we still have not paid the price for fully yet. We live in a false propped up economy. 
because no one wants to assume the blame for it. So they're going to kick the can down the road as far as they can until someone can be the scapegoat for that. So as the classes are driven into poor and driven into wealthy, the middle class is effectively destroyed and rendered useless, which is the only, which is the primary class that would actually be capable in, in most aspects. No matter which system a nation has, historically it ends like this is looking like it's going to end, where at both there's a, both a upper class and a lower class, and the middle class is essentially eliminated from the mix. And if you look back to the lockdowns, that was a very obvious thing back when the lockdowns happened. Those, those big box stores and companies owned by friends of the elite, a ton of mom and pop shops could not survive that environment. And in the meantime, the big box stores are making record profit and that is why we are, are where we are. That squeeze is happening in businesses and corporations and that in turn forces down that, that same pressure and that wedge down into just everybody's life. When the most people are poor and divided, that is when they are at their weakest and that is the goal of why media reports the way it does, why the government tells us what it does and why the message is so controlled and propaganda is so so everywhere so thick and obvious now at this point if you look at it through this lens it's very easy to see why taxes are well over a 40 percent effective rate why we have record inflation in our nation and really around the world it's it's happening worldwide but the focus is especially on the united states citizen because we are the most powerful citizens on the globe and the only bastion of freedom left. So that's why it's such a targeted thing. Uh, it's why the new generations cannot afford to purchase a home. Home, pi home prices have just gone to ridiculous levels. And on top of that, we have high interest rates falsely propping up the economy again. And eventually that's all going to come crashing down. But for now, it's just all a part of the game to keep people from owning. And that goes back to that time when it was admitted that we will own nothing and we'll like it. That's why everything is geared towards renting or leasing in modern times. You're not supposed to own things because that ownership empowers you. And that is why the dollar has shrunk to such a small value. No matter how many dollars you try to make, it's like that financial ceiling that you're trying to achieve just keeps getting higher and higher as you earn. You, it just is not keeping up. The day-to-day -day life is just not allowing you to build any resources. Is why we're being forced into an electric-driven future without infrastructure being in place to do so. We're not ready for the all-out just diving right into electric everything. We still need to take advantage of the resources that we have, but we're not, and the infrastructure is not there. So why are we being pushed like that and that is because more control is desired by the government because they want your comfort to be on their hands they want your driving to be in their hands all of it is so that you are being cradled and held by the government it's why 30 percent of gen z is lgbt whatever never gonna have babies that's part of the goal too because Again, more citizens is more power and they're trying to eliminate that. So that's why that push has been so big as well. It's why the border has just been left wide open and why people from non-adjacent countries are crossing the entire ocean from very hostile countries to come to our country with military age males from combatant countries essentially with all the proxy wars we're in and that we've been in and that is a major issue. We have not seen the, that come to a head yet. It will come to a head and it's not just going to be one incident, one terror. It's not just going to be one terrorist incident that happens. It's going to be repeated back to back to back episodes. And that is, and that will be used as a basis to come after more of our rights, the entire bill of rights, not just the second amendment, but all of the rights they're going to be pursuing those. It's why, we as kids were taught to not judge people by the color of their skin, but in modern times, everyone is being taught that they need to use that 
as a basis to judge somebody on. It's why the Georgia Guidestones had a bunch of specifications on it, including that the Earth's population be reduced down to 500 million people. It's why that stone, it's why those stones were mysteriously blown up in 2022 and no one was ever found to be the culprit. All they have is a short video of someone driving away in a little car after they blew up the guide stones. But the big secret had been written there for many years, for decades, so we kind of know what the jig is at this point. And as I already mentioned, the Bill of Rights is going to be butt rammed on a daily basis and it's going to be a relentless pursuit of our enumerated rights. It's why the Supreme Court is being ignored despite very strong decisions that empower the citizens. Of course, all of those are up for debate and up for states and locales to decide if they want to follow or not. That's not how it works, but that's what they're doing and they're getting away with it and they're going to continue to get away with it. It's why three letter agencies, bureaucracies of the executive branch are absolutely rogue. They've gone rogue. They are lawless, they break the laws, they enforce non-laws, rules that they make up on a whim, and that's not going to be getting any better. For example, ATF is still pursuing everything they were pursuing before the Bruin decision came out, and more. They've doubled, tripled, quadrupled down on the attacks against the American people. And notice that most of these crackdowns that they're doing on their on the rules that they make up that aren't actual laws are going to be in more suburban areas and yet where actual crime is happening in the cities it's wholly ignored because they are terrified that things might not work out very well for them in those situations <clears throat> it's why we have multiple escalating proxy wars we all know we're headed toward world war three at minimum some people say civil war two but at minimum we're heading toward you know, World War Three. It's pretty obvious there's wars everywhere. We're involved in them. We have troops off the shore over there at Gaza, and we're, our government is still claiming we're not involved in the war. We're just sending money. We're just sending weapons, and we're basically funding both sides to fight. And that is the classic old man tyrants willing to put all of the young men's lives at risk so that they can enrich themselves or gain themselves more power. And that's what we see here with this. And it's why we have a draft as well as the world's most powerful standing army. Doesn't make sense to have both, but we have both because there is something else that's anticipated for us where our young men will be sent away and sacrificed like pawns. So what does all this mean? What do we do with this? All it means is that you're behind the curve. I'm behind the curve. I'm trying my best. I'm trying to get the word out my best, but we are all behind the curve. If you have not started preparing, you're, you have, there's still hope for you, but you need to get going now. If you are preparing, prepare more. And if you've lived up into the mid 2020s without a thought of preparation or any anticipation that things might go sideways, Please read my book. It will help you immensely. You'll be able to see the you'll be able to see what happens to disarmed populations throughout history every single time and you'll lose hope. And at that point you will have actual hope because you can start to prepare and give our kids a chance at inheriting something good and not inheriting our problems, fighting our wars and in debt as soon as they're born from the womb. So my main message is to get prepared. Prepare yourself, prepare your family. That doesn't just mean firearms, but that's a huge part of it. But get this firearm situation squared away. Also get your water squared away, get your shelter squared away, your food, everything. Prepare, get ready. If you wait much longer, you're gonna find out how false these good times actually are that we live in and by then it's going to be way too late so start now thanks for watching